The following podcast contains language and themes some people may find offensive. It also contains love. Love, love, love is all you need, apparently. Happy Valentine's Day. Hello and welcome to That Was The Week That Was, Was It? The podcast that asks its guests about their week, like a nosy father who's only granted an hour's vegetation rights each week. Joining me for this episode is Hayley Pettit. Hayley, how are you? What have you been up to? Are you good? Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, what have I been up to? Oh, you know, you know me, I like same old, same old. Um... Yeah, just... Random yeah. kids oh, stuff, isn't it? It's just, it's just kids, kids stuff. I know you, something it? quite exciting happened. I won a competition. What? I know. Not the most exciting competition, but still pretty good because I never win anything. You know, everyone says that, right? Um, but yeah. I won some theatre tickets to go and see Come From Away. So we're going to go and see that this week. So I'm really excited. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Where did you win that? Do you know what? I enter so many things, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, whoever it was. Thank you, who thank gave you. Hayley the tickets um so our guest for this episode is a comedian author journalist i mean the list goes on she's on everything she's written for the guardian the independence and the times all of them uh it's lovely to finally have a chat with her it's ariane shireen how is it going ariane it's going great it's going really well Oh, good. Have you won any competitions recently? <laughs> well, no, but I have won the lottery of love, Alex. Oh. I, feel, I feel is is better, but I don't want to. I don't want to suggest that your competition because that's great. I mean, that's going to the theatre is fantastic, but finding a life partner is perhaps a little bit more fantastic <laughs> well it might be i mean both both me and Haley have been in really long-term relationships so um how's it going for you Haley? <laughs> do you remember when it was exciting and new and fresh no <laughs> but yeah that's, that's great I mean, i'm sure we're going to touch upon that and if that happened this week so i'm really excited to get onto that um so i guess we will start start with uh well i just want to say for one thing um i always like to get a sort of feel about how the guests are and i if they've got any media out there i do listen to it or i do and you know um get as much of it as i can i listen to your podcast ariane oh no <laughs> wow what an eye opener <laughs> which episode did you listen to alex well i listened to the first one right about penises all about the penises, yep. Right. 35, 35. I'm not sure if that number's changed since then. Uh, but, yeah, it's, um, <laughs> but I was like, anyway, I'm, I'm no prude. I'm no prude at all. I'm absolutely fine. But when I was listening to it, I was like, oh, oh, my. I started fanning myself. I was like, oh. Yeah, you, you go all in, don't you? Well, the penises go all in. I just <laughs> sit on them. What can I do? I mean... Well, you know what? I loved it. I mean, as I say, I listened to the first one, then listened to the second, and I continued on. I'm about halfway through now, so I'm going to finish it. Oh, I'm going to finish the whole series. Yes. Any plans for any more? Definitely not. No, no. I don't <laughs> know if my my new boyfriend would be. <laughs> I was actually thinking of taking them down, but then I thought it might be a bit disrespectful to the guests who'd given their time so generously. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's, your, it's your podcast. It's your podcast at the end of the day. It's it's completely your baby, isn't it? Well, they're pre-Kieran, so they're pre-me meeting him. Mm. And I don't really want him to listen to them because I feel like, A, it's probably a bit intimidating, and B, who wants to know that much detail about what <laughs> their girlfriend has done with I other mean, men? Nobody, I mean, right? Yeah, Nobody. I, I guess it's out there, but yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, alternative intro, in case you want me to not have that in this. Um, so, tell that's me fine, about the. <laughs> I've got this back up. Um, okay. Your, Lovely. your probably your your finest hour, I would say, uh, from an outsider looking in, is probably the atheist bus campaign, which right. was. I didn't know. I didn't realize you were behind it. If I'm honest with you, because I obviously saw yeah. that. I saw, I saw the God ones first, and being an atheist myself, I was a bit... Uh, um, but then <laughs> I saw your campaign, and I just want to... Congratulations, that was amazing. Well done. 
Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I can't believe that it's 12 years ago now. Um, Shocking, isn't it? So yeah, long. almost 13 years ago. So um, <laughs> when I did that campaign, I was single, very, very single, and I'd never been married. I hadn't had any kids. And now I have been engaged four times. I've never been engaged back then. Um, four times. I've been married once, divorced once. Obviously, if I'd been divorced like more than once, that would be really That's weird. And... Yeah, the numbers wouldn't work out, yeah. <laughs> but I also have a 10-year-old girl, um, oh, 10-year-old amazing. daughter, who's, who's now sassing me and better at maths than me and stuff. So that's <laughs> very strange the way that time Oh, when, when, yeah. you, when you work it out like that, it's awful. It's, it's bad enough when you watch a film. And it's like I watched Casino Royale the other day because I wanted to revisit the Bond thing. And I'm... I'm older than Daniel Craig was when he did that. And that oh, really frightened how old me. Are you? I'm 42. He was 41 right. when he did it. So I'm literally just on yeah. literally just over it, but that's still I couldn't do what he did. But anyway, that's a different matter. No. I mean, I'm 41 now and I couldn't do it. <laughs> no. Nor would I want to. It's crazy, so, isn't it? But I'm sure you have many other great qualities that are even better than his. Mm. Well, we'll we'll look at that. Um, <laughs> I don't look. I look really clumsy when I get out of the sea. Put it that way. Not like he did. Um, <laughs> very off putting. But yeah, still, we're here to talk about your week, Ariane. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we're Great. here. So Great. we're going to start with Monday, and then we're going to break it down from there. So Monday, how was that for you last week? So Monday was great, but I think if I could be so bold as to kind of slightly tweak the format. Oh, go, that sounds go, go ahead. And no, it, go sorry, ahead. Because the thing is that I met my boyfriend, my new boyfriend, two weeks ago today. Right, so what okay. I'm going to say about next mon last Monday is kind of relevant. We need yeah. to hear about this. Definitely. So I, I need a little bit of, uh, to give you a bit of backstory. So he turned up at my gig in York two weeks ago. Right. And, um, my gigs, just to give you, because you said, you know, I did the Atheist Bus campaign, right? Mm -hmm. So now I write books that nobody buys. <laughs> and the only way that I can sell these books is by going on tour around the country doing oh. atheist and humanist and skeptic gigs. And right. they are really lovely, all the audiences, and they like me and they will buy my books. Ah. And um, so I sell the books at these gigs. And um, my latest book, which came out in 2020, is called How to Live to 100. And it came out about a year ago at a time when most people were more interested in living to next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I mean. it, it, it's probably sold less than 100 copies, in, in all honesty. Um, and because I do these humanist talks, most of the people who go to them are elderly. Yeah. Which is okay. great, you know, it's, it's that, like have so much life experience and I've learned so much from them. Um, but I'm sitting at this talk and this super hot guy walks in and sits in the front row. And right. I recognized him from Facebook and he said he was going to come to my gig. But, you know, people say things and they don't always follow through. Oh, yeah. And... Yeah, no, I'm amazed you're here talking to us now. What are you going? <laughs> 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 well, I haven't followed through yet, so, you know, no, thankfully. There's, there's, there and if time. I do... We'll hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't, you can't see it. That's the main thing. <laughs> so, um, so I'm sitting there, and a uh, gorgeous guy walks in, and I had checked out his Facebook page, and I got the wrong idea because his date of graduation was quite recent, and I assumed that he was in his 20s. And right. as a mum, a single mum in her 40s, I thought, I can't go out with a guy in his 20s. That's, oh, you can, that's... you can. Well, I, I thought... <laughs> hey, at least you can. <laughs> <laughs> I thought if I do, it probably won't work. We won't have that much in common. We won't have that kind of connection, you know. It'd be a sex thing. I don't really want a sex thing. Um, I Also, I've never really dated anybody younger than me, ever, in my life. Um despite the 35 that Alex uh, refers to. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. All, all um, older. They were all older. All older, yeah. yeah. So, so I was literally like, 
okay, this is not going to happen. Anyway, so I said to him, because he didn't look that young, and I um, I said to him, oh, you're, you're like 20, in your 20s, aren't you? You're like 27. And he said, no, no, I'm 35. And yeah. uh, I realized that he'd been a mature student, and that's why his graduation oh. date was recent. And I go. said to him, I think it was a bit of a giveaway because I said to him, oh, that's not too, uh, uh, I mean, not very <laughs> young. <laughs> too young to date. <laughs> wow. And I know. And then I said, um, have, have you got any kids? And he said, no. I said, well, not yet. So I think Ooh. that was. <laughs> there we go. I mean, he sort of grinned and, you know, and then. Um, so is this a relationship or a hostage situation? I just want to check, make sure. So where this is going? Is he okay? trying to get out? Is he okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then, then came the one downside. So he said that, I said, where do you live? And he said, Newark. And I said, oh, wanker. And he got what he meant because wanker yeah, is an Alabama anagram Newark. of Newark. That's yeah, right. but if he hadn't known that, he might. This might all not be happening. <laughs> yes, sir. if he's from Newark, he knows that. He knows that. Because I, I went to college in Newark. I'm actually from Lincoln, oh, and um, right. and yeah, so I know Newark fairly, fairly well. Um, nice to hear he got out. That's all I could say. <laughs> no, he didn't get out. He's still there. Oh, he's still yeah. there, Alex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said to him, but this is the downside because I said to him do you live with flatmates or do you live alone? And he said, no, I live with my mum. And I was like, oh, my God, no. There it is. <laughs> but he, um, he said that he has moved out before for a long stretch and mm. uh, he would be moving out again. And then he was going, oh, it's only, it's only like an hour on the train to London. So I think because he knew I lived in London. Yeah. And so we, we're like flirting with each other. And, oh, I was so flustered. I started twirling my hair, which is something I do when I'm, when I'm flirting, when I'm not consciously, but when I like somebody, I start playing with my hair and flicking yeah. it a bit. And um, then he said to me, so have you got any other gigs lined up? And I was so flustered. I went, no, no, I don't. And then I went, well, not nearby. And then I went, well, actually, I am doing Sheffield. <laughs> that was <just> like <laughs> so bad and so incoherent and stupid. <laughs> so um, the talk starts, and he's right in the front row, right in my eye line. And um, they were a lovely audience, but they weren't a very laughy audience. Mm. So most of my jokes, he was laughing the loudest and the hardest. Boring <laughs> like so, in the front there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just watching him laugh. And um, and uh, he, he, at one point, I said, oh, um, I was talking about being uh, mixed race and how you need to take more vitamin D if you're black or Asian because you don't make it from sunlight. And I was saying, oh, I think I'm the only black or Asian person in the room. Um, where have you put us or where have you been hiding us? Are we in some basement somewhere? You know, I was like, I was just joking about that. And um, at the end, Kieran comes up and he says, oh, I'm mixed. I'm quarter Jamaican. And I was like, oh, right. And um, so we had that in common um, yeah. that we're both mixed. My daughter's quarter, quarter Indian, so she's kind of got that in common with him. And I was thinking, I was, I was thinking, if we had kids, they'd be pandas. They'd be black and white and Asian. My wow. goodness, but yes. I didn't, I didn't say that. No, you, you wouldn't, would you? I mean, you you've already... <laughs> I mean, that's you already said about you're not too young, and then just go if we had kids, and then it's uh, a yeah. <laughs> digging, aren't you? Pandas. I love it. Yeah, cute little panda it. babies. Oh, that's really sweet. Oh, that's that's good that you did that, that nice connection there. And I mean, obviously, I mean, if he was he was the only like one who was younger in the room, by the sounds of it, uh, it's you know. <laughs> Not exactly uh, slim pick, is it? That's great. Did he, travel? did he travel all the way to York to come to your gig to meet you? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah, well, That's it was cool. nice. And then afterwards, he said to me, do you need any help with your suitcase? Um, because I've got an hour before my train goes back to Newark. 
And I wanted to say to him, oh, you know, like, let's go for a drink or whatever. But A, I was wearing a mask. I was quite COVID averse. And I was a bit like, I also, the, the guy who was my designated driver to take me back to my accommodation was waiting and kind of hovering. And mm. so I kind of let Kieran help me put the books back in the case. <laughs> but um, yeah, I am. Um, and he, he bought a book as well, which is really sweet. And I signed right. it from him and, you know, and anyway, I get back to my Airbnb. As soon as I get back, ping, my Facebook goes, oh, it was so nice to meet you. You were brilliant. Um, I loved your talk. Um, it was really lovely. And so I was doing a bit of back and forth. And um, then the next day we were messaging all day on Facebook. Um, and then, but he was, a, he was not asking really m many questions. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. And um, I learned later that he thinks that it's intrusive to ask questions. Like he says, oh, it feels like crying. I want right. to know all about you, but yeah, but it it's not. I mean, I'm ask really questions. nosy and I ask questions all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to ask. That's well, that's that's kind of sweet as well. It's that sweet, he, he, yeah. he see it, see it as prying. I guess it's quite old fashioned kind of, sounding, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he does sound really old old fashioned, yeah. but really he, hot he's as really well. Lovely. He sounds hot as well because he did say he's hot. <laughs> old fashioned, wow. <laughs> he's very hot, and um, then he um, he's he's um, but then we were like, I said, oh, you've got lovely eyes, you've got gorgeous eyes, and he said, he said, oh, you're extremely gorgeous, and so we we exchanged that. And I said, um, I said, you're gorgeous. Are you single? Because I thought, let's just put it out there. Yeah, and he definitely. wrote back. He wrote back, yes, I am single. I hope you're having a lovely afternoon. And I was like, no. Oh. Uh -oh. Continue it. No. <laughs> Ask a question for Christ's sake. I know that's a question, but it's the wrong one. <laughs> so Jump finally, after, after 24 hours of this, I just thought, I'm going to save us both some time. Yeah. So I basically said, I can't work out whether you're shy and backwards at coming forwards um, <laughs> and you want to date me or you just want to be friends. I said, e either's fine. I won't be offended. And he comes back. Well, it's both. I am really shy. So I move at a glacial pace with these things, but I would like to date you. And I was hey. like, hooray. So I said, That's okay, we'll is. come down. <laughs> I said, well, we should probably go on a date then. What are you doing on Saturday? And he was like, okay, oh, yeah, I'll come down to London. So um, he came down to London, which is which is uh, Saturday before this Saturday. So it's about 10 days ago. Yeah. Comes down. We spend the day together. But the catch, which is not very romantic on my part, is that I'd literally just split up from my ex when I mm. met Kieran and right. my ex had sent me a voicemail message during the week saying that he basically wanted to get back with me and he missed me and he still loved me. And oh. He was awful. He was like the worst man, the worst man like that I have been out with uh, for a very long time. He mm. was, I mean, everything about him was wrong. Right. But um, he was, <laughs> he was abusive. He was uh. shallow. He was, prejudiced he was you know he was a bastard he would not want in a man no. anyhow but but i was still trying to basically i have a problem guys because i go out with a type and that type and um, you were right to take that swig then and not now <laughs> is that type is basically my dad it's awful right um, because yeah i'm the same i'm the same um, that... <laughs> <laughs> so my dad, he was um, a very damaged, flawed human being, and he was abused as a kid, and so he abused me and my brother as kids, mm. um, physically and emotionally. Mm. And so I, my whole life, my romantic life, I have spent trying to find a man exactly like my dad and fix him yeah. so that I will be fixing well, my childhood. That makes yeah. sense. So it does. a tall guy, a white guy, a guy who is like brooding and, and um, angry and full of rage and violence and 
um, a lot of my exes have resembled this, well, this was kind of blueprint and I haven't been able to fix them because they've been awful people. Yeah, you, you can't <laughs> that is fix a it. flaw in no. the plan. You, you can't fix it. There's so it. much you, you can do. It. No. It yeah. really is. And so, like, Kieran, um, he's, like, a few inches taller than me. Um, he's mixed. He's nice. He is not my dad, right? He Excellent. is, like, the opposite of my dad. He is kind. He is gentle. He is caring. He would never, ever want to hurt me or hurt anybody. He's an NHS volunteer in his spare time and makes old people cups of tea in a Oh, A&E. my oh, goodness. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You're trying something different. Yeah, you've broken the mold. <laughs> yeah, so this is positive. But then uh, we had a really lovely day on this Saturday, and then stupid me, what I went and did was I friend zoned him. I was <sighs> like, oh, he's so nice. He's so nice. I he possibly he can't be right for me because I don't go out with nice guys. That's not what I do. Oh, so I was like, yeah. oh, can we be friends instead? Because I'm still in love with my ex, and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I kind of came to my senses, and I was like, I don't want this guy as a friend because I don't want any other girl to get him. Yes, because <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that is the main motivator. Because <laughs> I thought, oh my god, what if I let him go, and then some other girl gets her claws into him, and then I'm like, it'll always be the one who got away, and I can't have that. No. So um, I invited him down again. So um, so to, an answer to your question, last Monday. What I did last Monday was I asked him down again okay. um, on Saturday. Yeah. On um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I cleaned the house. <laughs> <laughs> How big is but your I house? Quite, it's quite big. Well, it's, it's, it's over a thousand square feet. Wow. Right. But more crucially, I live in it with a, a 10-year-old. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and... Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and and on on <laughs> a ten year old who refuses to tidy anything because she says she has to tidy stuff at her dad, so it's not fair that she should have to tidy it in two places just because her parents are separated. Logic. Yeah, I, I can <laughs> see the logic a bit. I can see the logic. <laughs> I can't. Also, that's a bit no. of a, that's a bit of a guilt trip because it's like. If I didn't have separated parents, then yeah. I wouldn't have to tidy two rooms. You, you just know that she says that her dad's as well. <laughs> you know it, don't you? Well, I tidy What's it so... once. <laughs> What's so funny is that I was I was still tidying on the Saturday morning before he arrived, and um, my daughter asked if I could play cards with her, and I said no because I have to tidy the toilet. I have to clean the toilet, and she said why. And I said, because pe- when people come round, it's very important to have a tidy, uh, a clean toilet. And she said, oh, and clearly when they don't come round, it's okay to have a dirty one. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> that's what we always have. I was like, Where did she get this sass from? Where's she getting this sass from, Marianne? <laughs> uh, from her dad. Must be. It's got to be. <laughs> Unbelievable. But yeah, yeah wow. so, um, but we were... Kieran and I, I got him onto WhatsApp by that point, and we were messaging, 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 messaging. And he is so lovely. Every single morning, he will text me with, good morning, beautiful. How are you? I'm thinking of you. Um, oh, I like I hope this. you have a wonderful day. What have you got planned for today? Um, so, um, so that was what was basically happening every day last week. Wow. Um, but on two occasions, I think it might have been Tuesday and Thursday, he sent me a sexy shower photo. Ooh. Ooh. Of his shower? Not me. Oh, no. oh, oh, okay, so, sorry. <laughs> whatever, whatever floats your boat. I mean, I haven't got that far into the podcast series yet. I don't know if it turns into interior design at any point. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, I love interior design, but I love his body more. Oh, um, good, good, good. And, and yeah, um, I was going to say that I haven't had sex with my shower, but, you know, um, when <laughs> it you? needs masks, you yeah, know, you yeah. know where you put the shower head in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> he... Um, he, he just, he's got lovely brown skin and he's got muscles and he, um, cause 
Um, he's got muscles from guns, and I'm not talking about his arms. I'm talking like literal guns, because oh. although he's very peaceful and lovely, one of his hobbies <laughs> is historical reenactment. <laughs> Oh. You're making that up. He <laughs> <laughs> so reenacts like the English Civil War and um, World War One, World War Two. Wow. <laughs> amazing! This is amazing. But he's the British. He was the British in the World Wars. He was the you know the good guys in World War Two, I should say. Yeah. Um. Oh wow! Wow. Yeah. I, don't, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what to say to that. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> Wow. I just find it hilarious. NHS volunteer <laughs> and World War so, reenactment. <laughs> Excellent. Can, can you go watch this? Or is it like... Yeah, you, can. you can go watch... Are you going to go watch him? You can. Watch well, him he says he only does it about... <laughs> he says he only does it about three times a year, but with these guns, right, he says that they are like four-ton guns. And I said, how... How can you carry them? And he said, well, there are four of us carrying them. Mm. But, like, a ton is, like, over 800 kilograms. That's... Now, to put this in perspective, when I'm doing Apple Fitness workouts, the trainers press 15 kilograms, yeah. right? So 800 kilograms. Yeah. Oh, That's I, crazy. I used to work in retail. I used to work at, um, for Focus. Uh, do it right. All, right. So, oh, cool. I cool. Come on. I I used to have to lift um, like thirty kilogram um, things, uh, yeah. like like worktops and stuff like that. Um, I couldn't Maybe. I couldn't lift them. So I know I know yeah. what eight hundred kilograms is. I can imagine it's like quite a few of those. I could barely do. I could barely do fifteen. Oh, wouldn't do my prolapse any good. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> no, I mean, he says they're kind of on wheels, but that they have to kind of lift them up on their back. Wow. So, yeah, it's crazy. But that's what, you know, why he's got a nice body and, you know, so I'm not complaining. He that's great. I mean, like... Yeah, no. I mean, you normally say, like, people go to the gym, stuff like that, but when it's a nerdy thing and they get ripped, <laughs> that's impressive. It's lucky, because he's doing something he enjoys yeah. and he's working out at the same time. Lucky bastard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, God. well, um, you know, yeah, I can tough. say that about um, what I do with him. Guys, you know, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I have no idea what you're talking about. Literally, no idea. No. <laughs> Not a clue. What could it possibly be? <laughs> so, so, um, so, technically speaking, then your week has been inviting someone over on a Monday and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just making sure everything's tidy. While messaging him. Okay. And then that takes some time. And yes. Then, are we including the weekend? Oh, yeah. In the week? oh, oh, God, we'll yeah, have yeah, to, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't end it there. <laughs> no, no. So, um, so he turns up on the Saturday um, about lunchtime, mm. and um, I was a bit shy. Like, I thought, shall I kiss him at the door? But I was, I was just a bit shy, and so I didn't. And um, he, my daughter was there, so... Um, we have to be, you know, quite restrained and stuff. And mm. um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, so, you know, quite sort of, uh, it was it was very sort of PG um, uh, in the daytime. And, and so he comes into the kitchen and I introduce him to her. And um, she's sort of being brought up Jewish because though she's not Jewish herself, her stepmom and half-sister are. Right. So she gets... She gets all the good bits, so she doesn't um, have to do the like the religion like bit, like uh, learning all the religion stuff. Which I think in any religion is um, when you're a kid is not all that fun. Yeah, but she boring. gets to do yeah. Hanukkah, so she has all the presents of Hanukkah. She yeah. gets like eight presents, one for every night, and then she gets like challah breads and sesame chicken and all the great food. So right. it's basically it's basically like Christmas is for like you know non-religious people who are christian but just in it for the food and all that <laughs> yeah um but Ki but kieran is also jewish so he goes to shul on a friday and um so he um he kind of bonded with lily because not only are they like both quarter mixed 
but they're both Jewish. Well, okay. Lily's not really Jewish, but she's being brought up as Jewish. Yeah. So, so that was nice. So they got to talk about that and like Passover and Seder plates and stuff like that. So that was nice. Um, and um, then we went out. We went to a cafe and Kieran brought us all crepes for lunch. Right. And then we went to walk a very frou-frou dog. She's a Pomeranian, a bit like oh. me. I'm a Pomeranian. Oh, um, <laughs> oh see what you did there. <laughs> Is that the only reason you got her? <laughs> no, no. Just for that it's joke. not my dog. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I missed that bit. No, no. no so basically, my daughter has wanted a dog forever. Mm. And she um, gets to um, – so she, she has basically um, – can I have a dog? Can I have a dog? Can I have a dog? And I'm like, no, because I do a lot of recording. Yeah. And if I'm recording a pop song and have oh, oh, in the background, <laughs> unless it's how much is that doggy in the window. Yeah. It's not really gonna gonna work. And you've got to get I that know. timing right. It doesn't no. work. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I said no. And, it, you know, I go away on tour quite a bit. And, you know, I don't have that... Uh, want to have that much responsibility so what we've done is use this site called borrow my doggy yep used it myself i know it it's very Did good you? oh you've yeah you? but you've got a yeah. dog no we, this is when we didn't have a dog we um oh. we yeah did borrow my doggy a few times uh <laughs> no. then we decided yeah we'll just settle on getting one we'll um get one. but yeah it's it's a great it's a great idea borrow my doggy i love it the, the, the it's amazing you, yeah the fact you can just literally have that responsibility for a, a small amount of time and <laughs> just give it back. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. Still wouldn't except, do it. Except when um, your daughter, because like, she was like, if we get a dog mum, I will do everything. I will do everything. I will, <laughs> you know, I will feed it. I'll do, I'll be so hands-on mum. I will be like, you won't have to do a thing. Anyway, now we borrow this dog and at least once, Mom, it's done a poo. It's done a poo. <laughs> yep. So, um, Kieran, he, he was super chivalrous. He said, "Don't worry, I'll get it. I'll do oh, it." Oh, um, what a man! He gets the oh. bag. He picks up the poo, puts oh. it up in the bin. Legend. You know, um, <laughs> and I'd forgotten my hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh. But it was during it was during the the dog walking. That we finally held hands, mm. and yeah, we finally held hands, and um, then um, so that was nice. And we sat on a bench while Lil ran around with the Pomeranian, and um, I put my head on his shoulder. He stroked my hair. It was all very mm. nice and romantic and stuff. Um, and then um, then we went to Tesco and we got some groceries for that night's meal and Kieran paid for them as well. At which point, cause he'd bought the crepes and the groceries. I was like, let me get us some, some nice hot drinks. So I paid for some drinks at Costa Good plan. and um, L- Lily had a muffin. And so we all sat there and it was, it was just really, it was kind of the nicest thing you can do in Leytonstone, mm. which it's more about Leighton Stone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we hear that. Yeah. <laughs> oh. On the way back, we went to some charity shops, and Lil got some clothes because she likes she she's really into climate change um, yeah. activism. Good. So she won't allow us to buy her new clothes anymore. Everything oh. has to be secondhand, the that. reuse, recycle. Yeah, it's nice. It's really it's really civic minded, and um. You know, I mean, I suppose it makes sense because she's the generation that are going to have to deal with it. We are not going to have to deal with it, guys. Definitely not. Not really, no. 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 We'll be out of here. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's it's good to to, to hear it firsthand that they are, you know, um, at least someone is taking responsibility for the climate (laughs) change thing. It's, uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. But, um, yeah, fair play to Kieran for, you know, stepping up and... Picking up the getting, poo. Yeah, buying, getting, buying getting his hands and, dirty, as it were. Yeah. Not literally. Yeah, the That's... bag, but, you know. Did you hold hands yeah. before or after the poop? Something? Oh, yeah, good question. <laughs> we held hands before and we held hands after, and I'd forgotten my sanitizer, it must so, you know. be love. That's all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what was quite bad is because 
like then um the dog came over and it had this terrible dog poo smell and i thought oh my god is it on our hands is it on our feet if we stepped in it but what it was is because the dog is so what we call floofy it is a very fluffy dog it um a lot of the residue of the poo had um, yeah. left itself in its dog pubes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. We, uh, it's so, not nice. sometimes it's not with pleasant. Pippa, um, there's like, because my, my wife Emily has got very, very long hair, very long hair. And unfortunately, right. it does get into the pug. Um, and unfortunately, it does come out of the bum sometimes. So sometimes it will be hanging. <laughs> There'll be a poo hanging on a bit of Emily's hair. And it confuses the hell out of the dog. I tell you, it's amazing. It's just like when she runs off, it's just like looking back. Yes, I'll get, I'll get it on video sometime and I'll post it. It's very good. Um, so, <laughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, I yeah, fair play to you, Ariane. I think that's great, the, the fact that you, you've... You've got this lovely, lovely, fresh relationship thing. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it's nice. It's nice. So um, we went home and we made um, dinner and Lily actually ate some. She usually doesn't eat anything I make, oh. but she ate a little bit of this pizza, pasta, cheese thing that we made. Right. Um, and um, then we watched, we played a game called Monopoly Deal, which is always great fun. I highly recommend it. If you like Monopoly, but Monopoly is just too long so for long. you. Is, is it, Monopoly takes forever. Is this the fast paced one? I think I've seen yes. that. Yeah, yeah, you can play it in 15 minutes. Ooh. And it's just like Monopoly, but with cards. It's oh, fantastic. Wow. Okay. No, let's have a look that at that. Yeah, it, it's been on my radar. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, so we so we played that, and then we watched a film called Edward Scissorhands, mm-hmm. which is this beautiful that. fairy tale. It came out in, I think, 1991, yep. and it's Johnny Depp and Winona Ryder, but it is really sad. Really and bad. afterwards, Lily was trying not to cry, Aww. and she said, it's too sad, Mummy, it's too sad. It, it, it wasn't his fault. None of it was fair. No. It wasn't fair. She'd have this really inbuilt Aww. sense of what's fair and what's just. And yeah, she was she was very oh, sad about that. Her. I think in re- on reflection, we should probably have just watched Home Alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Not the remake. Not the one that's just come out. Oh no. Oh, is it bad? Oh, it's oh, but the review. I haven't seen it yet, but the reviews no I've seen and it. the descriptions just, of it. No, no one's watched it. Don't want but to. Appara- apparently, because it's um, yeah, it's 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 obviously modern day, but the yeah. the thieves that break in to the house apparently aren't thieves. They're just people that are convinced <laughs> that the kid has stolen something from them, and they're just going in to go and get it because they what? think the house is empty. Oh, that's not... That's stupid. And not so much jeopardy. Yeah, but in, in the reviews, they're saying, like, there's really bizarre moments when you realise that these people that aren't thieves are just, like, really genuine people. They're just trying to get the heirloom back or whatever it is. And one of them is pleading the little kid not to set fire to them, and then the kid does. <laughs> oh. And they're saying, <laughs> as an origin story for a serial killer, it's really, really good, but... Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but for Home Alone remake, not to so watch much. it on on this no. Saturday, all three of us, mm. because um, Kieran wants to watch Home Alone, but Lily's seen it, and so is Kieran. So Kieran said, like, it'll be good to watch one that none of us have seen. I mean, but watch not it. I mean, no, I mean, I, I'm just I'm just <laughs> going by what people say. That's all. I'm, I haven't but watched Home Alone too. Lost in New York. You could watch that one. That one's good. I like that one. <laughs> but Kieran's seen oh. that as well and it has got I mean, a cameo yeah. from on, I mean on Disney okay. Plus there are about six of them I think oh. and I'm, yes, not, I'm, yeah, not, there are. I'm not even over exaggerating there I think there are six Home Alones there are yeah yeah I was having a look I am um, we've got Disney Plus well actually to be more accurate I've got my ex-husband's Disney Plus ah. that's the one thing that I've still got <laughs> that's yeah. the one thing I cherish from him <laughs> is his Disney Plus subscription <laughs> Oh, he wasn't so bad, but um, yeah, it's um. So after the film, um, unfortunately, um, I had to make Kieran sleep in the front room. No, because well, my daughter still insisted on sleeping in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> she and, um, knows what she's doing, I'm sure. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I tried to to settle her and get her to go to sleep. And um, then I tiptoed out 
And this voice went, Mum, where are you going? And I said, oh, I'm just going downstairs to say um, goodnight to Kieran, darling. And she went, well, come straight back. <laughs> so, oh, um, roll reversal. Roll <laughs> yes, reversal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then what I did was I did go to sleep, but I woke up at 6 a.m. while she was still asleep, tiptoed downstairs, mm. woke Kieran up. He was snoring. <laughs> <laughs> woke him up, and he was a little bit um, confused and dazed. and Because dist- I imagine, like, he's like, where am I? Who are you? <laughs> What's yes. happening? Yeah. But, um, yeah, but then um, it was very nice. And, um, you know, a lady never kisses and tells. Right. Mm. But I'm not a lady, thankfully. <laughs> so, uh, so we did it, and it was really hot. It was really nice. It was just, it was just really loving and sweet, and you know, he's just so kind and, and caring. And I was like, oh, um, because like the night before when I went down to say goodnight, we kind of got a little bit steamy, and then I went, oh, I haven't shaved anything, and he went, it's okay, I don't <laughs> mind, and it was so sweet, and then also. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, mean, I thought I thought that <laughs> Oh, so sweet of you. You didn't shave. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well no, well the problem is the thing is that because I'm Asian, right, mm. my hair is really coarse. So what I do is I shave straight before I know I'm gonna be touched. Right. Because then it'll be smooth. I see. Whereas, you know, if it a few hours have elapsed then it's yeah prickly again which I is see. crazy but true I see. so um I see. so i just wanted to so what i did was i got up like um i think i had a shower the night before and then i got up at six in the morning and uh woke him up and then i was smoother anyway <laughs> and um <laughs> yeah yeah and um oh. what was really nice is that like my ex-boyfriend boo my mm. awful ex-boyfriend mm. he um, <laughs> He said that I was too fat to be sexually attractive oh, and that, that he didn't fancy me and that it was a deal breaker and that I had to lose weight for him. Oh, my God, because what, he was some sort of Adonis, was he? Please. No, well, that's the thing. So, like, he, like my daughter said when we broke up, she said, because um, I was really sad and I was crying, and yeah. she went, Mummy, yeah. I know it's not important, but it might help to remember that he had a very ugly face. Yes, it's very important to remember. <laughs> there we Lily go. Is a very wise young lady. <laughs> From the mouth of babes. Yeah, good girl. Yeah. He, he would constantly be like, oh, Ari, you're a beast. You're too fat, Ari. You just, you know, I can't be sexual with you because you're just too fat. Oh, and yeah, um, I, like I never said to him, yeah, but I'm fat, but you're ugly, <laughs> but I can lose weight. Like the whole the whole Winston Churchill thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, madam, and you're ugly, but in the morning I will be sober. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I will wake up next to you. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the bit they always leave out that's the bit they always leave out <laughs> no he wasn't Boris Johnson no <laughs> but, but yes but but Kieran was just like you have a phenomenally sexy body it's so incredible I love your body I love your curves like you're so hot and he was he literally made me feel so much better oh. and he said because I was like oh no I need to lose weight and when he said you're in you have an incredible body. I was like trying to stop myself from going, yeah, an incredibly fat body. And then, <laughs> then like, so like he, he, he was, I know like you shouldn't reject compliments because it's like rejecting gifts. It's, it's not nice. So, um, he said to me, look, you know, I wouldn't send to you any more if you were, or any less, if you were skinnier or, or heavier. Right. Mm-hmm. He said, so if you want to lose weight, you lose weight for yourself. Yeah, Don't enough. do it for me. Cause it makes no difference to me. I just think you're beautiful. And it's so oh, nice to so hear nice. that from a guy. He went to York just... for your gig, especially. I know. I and then he came down to see me twice. <laughs> and after this, First time he came down to see me, I friend zoned him and I can't forgive myself. I feel <laughs> awful. I think it's I think it's got better since then though, by the sounds of things. So Oh yeah, no, it's, it's, it's right. really it's really, really it's really nice. But I mean he um I think like he because he he said um he's planning to come down um from Thursday to Sunday this week. Okay. Mm-hmm. So um 
so that we'll have some time together without Lil, and then we'll have some time together with Lil, mm -hmm. um, and we might go to Somerset House and do some ice skating. Oh, um, lovely. Um, yeah, so it's just so nice. It's like being a little family. Um, now, and can I he ice skate? Kind of is the question. Yeah. Yes. He's got his grade four. Oh. <laughs> what can't he do? <laughs> <laughs> he can't be mean by the sounds of it. That's yeah, what it is. He can't be mean. Anything. He can't be mean. Oh. Well, thankfully, he doesn't do music because he can write. He can do graphic design. He's like, he can do sports. He's, he's got muscles, but he doesn't do music. So he's not stepping on my toes, but mm. in that area. Mm. So, you know, we have that yeah. separate. Good. That's good. Um, but the thing is that I, um, my last album, well, my, my album that I'm going to put out next year is all about my ex-boyfriend. And right. I feel like really weird about it. It's, it's called Bitter, and it's a, it's a <laughs> load of diss tracks about him. <laughs> well, let's get you got that all out of your um, system, and that all happened before you met Kieran, so it's... it's all, exactly. It's all... There's pre-Kieran, oh, post-Kieran. I, I really want to know exactly. how many tracks are on the album. Mm. So there's going to be, like, I think about 20 tracks on there, <laughs> okay. um, which is a lot. <laughs> it, it is a it lot. a lot of vitriol. I was going to say, because <laughs> I, 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 I was saying about, that's what I was thinking. In my head, I was like, must must be about 20 if it's about the X. And then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, there's 20. And I was like, well, there we go. <laughs> well, what I thought I'd do is so the first album is called Bitter, and it's about my ex. Mm -hmm. Then the next album is called Better, and it's mm -hmm. about my little girl. That's good. And about how um, she's like made my life so much better. And then I thought I'd do another album after that called Better. Sweeter. Oh, okay. It'll yes, be love songs. <laughs> no, it's, all about... butter, butter. <laughs> it's all about fish. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I thought I'd do Sweeter, which would be all love songs about him and stuff. So that oh. would be nice. That's um, great. I still don't, like but what, what, what's kind of, I'm wondering, and I might have found this out by the time this podcast goes out and he hears it, <laughs> but I am wondering whether he wants kids because he is like, <laughs> no, but this is the problem. This is the thing, right? So like, if he doesn't want kids, that's fine because I've got one. Yeah. So I don't feel like, like I, I desperately need more. Also, I think that kids, they don't, um, like, <laughs> my friend described them as the best ever way of ruining your life. Oh, she's right. <laughs> so, like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, they are amazing. And I, I think I, I am so much, I'm so glad I got to have a kid. Um, but they completely disrupt things. And I think that they make relationships much more difficult and much more strained, especially when you have young kids. Mm. Yeah. Because um, you're not getting to spend so much time with each other and all your focus is on the kids and not the relationship. Alex, how does she know me so well? Well, that's the thing. I was just about to say, because <laughs> I, I don't have children. We have no plans to have them because right, of exactly right, right. what you're saying. They do disrupt everything. It's bad enough having a dog. I mean, that's probably what Kieran wants. He probably wants a dog, but then we'll, we'll, we'll cover that later. Um, but Hayley, you yeah. have... Three children? Have right? I've got that right. I've got that right. Yeah, six, four, yeah, three. and two. Yeah. Wow. For a second, I doubted myself. Six, four, and two. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Are you going to carry on and no, do like no. two, four, six, no. eight? And... No. <laughs> no. No. That's it now. No. But then they could all go two, four, six, <laughs> eight. Who do we appreciate? <laughs> my mum's yeah. all my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't appreciate that at all. <laughs> no, but Haley, you, you must you must be able to relate to this, surely. I mean, I mean I'm going to step back a second because I can't. Girls, girls <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it, yeah, it does make things really hard. Um, they're all planned, by the way, just in case they ever pull this out of an archive somewhere and uh, think, <laughs> think that they weren't wanted or they weren't loved. Um, no, of course they are. Aww. literally the most amazing things in the entire world but it, yeah, it does make things difficult because you you do lose you a little bit and you lose you quite a lot actually and you don't have time to do any of the stuff that you want to do until they're a bit bigger and then you get a bit more freedom and yeah it's okay I think you just have to you have to be really committed to being a team and it's um you know it's, it's just not always that easy but you get there 
sometimes you don't yeah. <laughs> but hopefully we yeah. will <laughs> I mean <laughs> you will I mean the thing is that it just gets easier well so far it's got easier and easier now I'm told that when we hit the teens Ooh, it's going to yeah. get more difficult yeah yeah <laughs> especially girls but, I think but, yeah <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't know yet. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. It's just what I've heard. But yeah, we we will see. But I don't know. From the sounds of Lily, she sounds she sounds very level headed. Yeah, she's okay. amazing. She she is an amazing kid. Um, but the thing is that um, I think that the problem with having more kids is that when she's in her difficult teenage years. Mm-hmm. She'll have, like, tiny toddlers, like, running around and tripping her up Mm. and, you know, and crying when she's trying to do her homework (laughs) and, um, like, taking all my attention and focus. And there is nothing that you can do with a 10-year-old and a one-year-old in terms of activity. No, no, there isn't. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. There is not. But you do have a (laughs) built-in babysitter later on. Yeah, there is that. Yeah, um, <laughs> really good but not a nappy changer if the dog poos <laughs> or anything to go by. I'd rather do nappies and dog poos. I could never have a dog just purely for the poo reason. But yeah, I've got three young children really? who perpetually shit on everything all of the time. So yeah, but that's part of you. That yeah. is like they are you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit of my poo as so well. They're not gross. <laughs> they get they get that from you, Haley. <laughs> Really shouldn't have bought those new sofas, should I? No, no. Oh, the kid's done it again, and it's really oh. you. I know, Haley. <laughs> but if, if um, I mean, I think that, um, like, if anybody had told me that I would voluntarily be picking another human's nose, <laughs> then I would have not believed it. But now, you know, I'm, I quite happily just go and retrieve bits of, Green snot from Goodness. my daughter's. <laughs> Goodness just, me! It's just love, isn't it? You just do it. Mm. Don't even think about it. Yeah, yeah. Just, you just I mean, I yeah. The closest I've got, the closest I got, I, I can relate to is sometimes we have to do the pugs' glands, the anal glands. Mm. <laughs> that has to be worse, Alex. Surely that has to be worse than a bogey. <sighs> Not really. No. When you say do, what do you mean? Well, because sometimes. Them. Well, yeah, you squeeze the glands because sometimes pugs, they get blockages. Because, you know, when they do a poo, the scent glands have to sometimes go... Oh, my God. They normally go on the poo, so it's an identifiable thing, apparently. But sometimes they get blocked. So you have to manually manipulate them so the anal juice comes out. And the smell of it, (laughs) the smell of it, it's like a very oh fishy god. kind of pooey kind of Oh my of god. Smell. Oh. oh my god. Never she's got the dog. cutest <laughs> face. She's got the cutest oh, face. Shame about her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's um that's gotta be love because like, I can't <laughs> Yeah. I, mean, I can't imagine doing that with anybody else not related to. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm just thankful that, you know, it's just for a short period of time because, you know, it's only 10 years max, isn't it? Anyway, the... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I keep doing that. I keep saying about when Pippa dies, that's our dog. I keep saying it, and I keep saying it was such a, like, a uh, whatever in this podcast. I've said it so many times. You have. It's recurring. And, um... Stop yes, saying recurring. it. Oh, Pippa. I think... She's going to put it out the archives one day and she's going to be cross with you. Yeah. But then won't you get another dog? Because yeah, that's probably. what happens. People just keep going on and getting more dogs. Yeah, um, probably. Thing is, thing is that um, going back to kids, if he does want kids, then in a way that's great because I would love more because one of my regrets is that I haven't had any more. Problem is I don't actually know if I'm able to have any more. So it's it all a bit... Cool. And also, I'm 41. I'd be like, let's get on it, mate. You know, yeah. <laughs> right. knock me up. Right. TikTok. Which you can't really do two weeks into a relationship. <laughs> no, three maximum, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor guy. Anyway, <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's um, I, I you know, it's, it's it's one of those discussions you'll have to have, I guess, later on, and just like, like you week. say, yeah. I think maybe start of next year, but then yeah. then it's like, what if I'm totally in love with him, and then like he wants kids, I can't have them, and then he leaves. 
No, I you can't I don't think, think like that. No, you can't I don't think, think like that, Ariane. I'm not going to leave you. I don't think that you get into a, a relationship with a thirty with a forty one year old woman and not be aware that that's a difficult age, yeah. like yeah. in terms of fertility. Yeah. Like, but he basically said that he wasn't going anywhere, and because um, I said if you stick around, you know, maybe the because he said Lily's so sweet, and I said yeah, she is, she's adorable, and I said. I'm not going to lie, you know, maybe the, maybe the teenage years are going to be bumpy if you stick around. She might get really grumpy. And he said, well, don't we, might, might we all, you know, we, we all get grumpy oh, and yeah. stuff. And um, then he said, well, I'm not planning on going anywhere. So that was really nice. And we've talked about, um, like, because I've said that uh, I would like to, if I become a huge great big pop star next year, I'd like to go and live in L.A. Mm. But if I, if I don't go and live in L.A., then I'd like to buy a really nice house in York okay. and just live in York um, in a lovely sort of Victorian, you know, oh. kind of with maybe ivy around the door and stuff. That would be lovely. Nice. And um, he was saying, yeah, I really love York. I miss York. Um, I'd be happy. And that would be kind of really sweet because that's where we met. Exactly. There yeah. We go. There we go. Well, I don't think you need any more positive signs. It's sounding really good. Really good. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is nice. It's really nice. And, you know, I feel really lucky. I feel, I'm kind of pinching myself. I can't really believe it because my last relationship was so awful that I became conditioned to just thinking yeah. that yeah. all relationships are going to be awful. Yeah. And so, like, now I'm, I'm like, you know, this is, like, kind of dream come true. Like, some amazing guy who's really kind, caring, and sweet, and, and you know, happy to take on a 10-year-old, which I think... Uh, a lot of guys. I mean, I remember when I was dating, um, when I, oh God, uh, I've got horror stories from when I was first um, became a single mom. And yeah. um, my daughter's dad said, please, please, please. He had two requests. He said, mm. one is please never let another man call her, um, never let another man, um, let her call another man daddy, mm. which yeah. is understandable. And yeah. I said, okay, well, the same goes with mommy. Okay. And he was like, yeah. And then he said, and, but also there's some really creepy guys out there and yeah. there's some pedophiles out there. Please yeah. never say that you've got like a toddler because yeah. there's guys who try yeah. and find women on dating sites with little kids. So, you know, so yeah. I was like, okay, I'll never do that. So I didn't tell guys. And I remember being on like Guardian Soulmate and trying to find a boyfriend. And this one guy, I uh, called me up and um, he was a lawyer called Rob and he was, Skiing in Chamonix for New Year, and what was I doing for New Year? And I said, well, um, I thought I could tell him now I've got a kid because, like, he has clearly hadn't, you know, been attracted to me because of that. So I thought I can tell him. Um, so I said, um, well, I've actually got a uh, nineteen-month-old girl, and uh, I will be spending New Year with her. Oh no, sorry, I don't want anyone with kids. Put the phone down. Wow. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the problem, isn't it? Because you know, if you don't say it, the they might not yeah, want it, yeah. and then if you do say it, they might. Yeah. Oof, gosh, it's a good. And I get that. System, Sorry, it's a good filtering system. Yeah, it is a good filtering system, and I think um, the thing is, like, but it was easier for um, my ex fiance, my daughter's dad, to make mm -hmm. that request of me because with uh women like if they find out a guy's got a kid it's just like they get the big heart eyes you know yeah. it's like oh <laughs> single dad oh that's so lovely yeah, um lovely. guys do not have the same response i can tell you like even the first guy that i um went out with after leaving my daughter's dad he was like well all other things being equal you wouldn't have a kid and wow. i was literally like um well, what do you want me to do? Put her up for adoption? Like, you know. to do with her? Yeah. Wow. That's fucking. Did he rude. say yes? Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I had this awful um, experience after him when it, I was on my single friend. I met this terrifying guy who started screaming at me in a hotel because I hadn't told him that I had a kid. And then when I told him, he started being like, well, why the hell would I want to go out with you then? If I could go out with any woman, why would I choose you? And wow. uh, yeah, so, so some guys can be so awful. So I don't underestimate like just Kieran being amazing and yeah. saying, you know, she's 
she's like she's a lovely kid and you know i'm I'm I, happy to be you know i don't get men i, I really don't i mean in general <laughs> you see, I, I'm, I'm i'm so not like that and i'm so alex is a feminist so, I, I i am you know, i am basically yeah totally. and i i just yeah. i just find that some of the things you hear and some of the things you response you know and it's that thing of well not all men but it's like it's a it's a down it seems to be a hell of a lot of them them. (laughs) if i'm honest with you yeah it's it's disturbing yeah and it's the horror stories i hear all the time i just find them really really oh oh i prefer the company of females yeah Yeah, i mean it's uh unfortunately i well i am attracted to women but i only one percent of women um would want a relationship with a girl mm. so um the one percent of women are are lesbians and okay. then i think like more are bisexual but uh like me but i think that a lot of bisexual women um don't necessarily see themselves ending up with a woman um yeah. because society is so heteronormative and because it's easy to have kids with a man and all the rest of it so um so yeah, so it's it's kind of difficult to meet a woman, um, and um, now I don't need to because I've got Kieran. <laughs> I it. haven't exclusively had terrible guys, but um, most of them have been pretty pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, I feel like they've all led me to him, so well, like, I it. can't regret any of them. That's it. That's I mean, there is yeah. that old thing. It all happens for a reason. But I mean, you know, it's it's a shame that you know you had to go through much go that much shit you know to get there but yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's good yeah. in the end. it's good it's good and uh i'm glad you're in a much happier place now as it were it's, it's yeah, uh... okay. oh thank you so much and i'm glad that you've both found your ideal person as well that's <laughs> lovely yeah i i fell it i fell into mine completely <laughs> 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 It was, um, yeah, yeah, we yeah. met online, me and my wife. Um, oh, did you? Yeah. Wait, wait. Well, this is the thing. We, wait, were, wait. we were on a site called, um, it was like a puzzle site. I can't remember what it was called before, but then it turned into a dating site called lovehappens.com. Oh, love happens. oh wow. That's so cool. Lovehappens.com, you had to pay a subscription to <laughs> actually message anyone. But I hadn't done that because I just I was on there for the puzzles. I wasn't there. I was single, but I was kind of bored. <laughs> um, but my profile came up in like matches for and an email for Emily, uh, and she wasn't a subscriber either. So she guessed wow. she guessed my email address to contact me because oh, she saw my wow. picture, and she got it right. And wow. uh, yeah, we just started talking from there. So because my profile, oh, wow. my profile was like complete. People were like saying, "What do you do on a night out?" It's like, "Oh, I'll go drinking with the lads." Blah blah blah. Mine wasn't like that. Mine was like, "You know, tell us something interesting about yourself." And mine was, "I have a very small uh, t- t- Siamese twin." <laughs> I always pause when I say that. <laughs> I have a very small Siamese twin on my hip who likes to dance to Phil Collins, and that's the only thing that was on my profile. <laughs> And she, she liked that, and she got in contact. And that, and we've been sort of – she lived in London. I was in Lincoln. She came and visited me. I visited her loads of times. Again, that commute from, you know, that area to yeah, yeah. London. It's very yeah, similar. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, I essentially just moved down, and that was it. And then we got married, Aww. and then we've been happy ever since. Cliché. <laughs> that, is, that is so lovely. I'm going up to Newark at the end of the month. We've arranged it. So I've got my gig in Sheffield that I pretended not to know about accidentally. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> at the York gig. <laughs> so I've got my gig at Sheffield. Then we're, I'm going back to his house. I'm going to meet his mum and his stepdad. Hey. And, um, yeah, and um, I'm going to have very, very quiet sex with him. Good. <laughs> <laughs> got it all planned with him not his step dad no, I was going to say that sounded wrong <laughs> got, a, got a question Kieran uh, what's your parents uh, hearing like what is that <laughs> and then um, then um, he's going to show me all, he's taking the day off work the next day yeah. Yeah. so he's going to show me all around Newark that won't and, take long like, so, 
<laughs> <laughs> so he's going to show me like where he went to school and where he grew up and and because he grew up in a windmill but not in old amsterdam wow in like in, a, in an actual windmill That's and it wasn't working yeah that's really cool yeah that. so um so, yeah and then um but i think like train tickets are really expensive they're like every time he wants to see me it's 50 quid shocking yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's, that's just the fee that's just what i charge him that's not, that's not the train. <laughs> no, <I'm> just... <laughs> mate's right um, <laughs> but no i mean i mean i think Realistically, if it works out after like six months, I think he should probably move. Move, yeah. Make the move. He's got one. He's done it before, by the sounds that he says he's moved once, so he can do it again. Doesn't take much to uproot, does it? Really doesn't. She says after two weeks. (laughs) (laughs) Got it all planned out. You might hear this and be like totally freaked out, but. Yeah, right, you're right. I'm just saying, no, it's another, it's, it's another Ariane Shireen. It's not that one. It's another one. <laughs> yeah, of course, there's so many. Yeah. I have been, I have been confused for. I've been introduced on stage as Ariel Sharon before. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's close. That's close. That is close. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unfortunately, he's dead. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't say alive. it was him on this podcast talking about Kieran. <laughs> I'll tweak the voice. Um, but yeah. Oh. oh that's great. So that, that was my week, guys. That's um, amazing. Thank you so Not a problem. Is there anything thank you would you like up. to promote or to just boast about? Oh. Apart, from, apart from Kieran, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and his well, muscles. <laughs> I, I've got my album Bitter coming out next year. Um, that's by Ariane X, which is my pop star name. Mm, so nice. um, please look out for that. But um, also, um, I've got a novel called Shitcom, which is hey. very funny. Um, it's sitcom with an H in it, and it's just as sweary as the title would suggest. It is incredibly rude. Lovely. So, you know, don't read it if you have a sensitive disposition, but I don't know if you'd have made it this far through this podcast if you have a sensitive <laughs> sensitive disposition. Well, um, I barely yeah, made it. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've loved every yeah. second. Every second. It's been fantastic. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. Thank you, but yeah, it's um one. It's only one ninety nine on Amazon. So um, yeah, so it's it's um a lot of laughs for one ninety nine. So um, yeah, hopefully you'll, you'll read it and like it. Yep. But um, other than that, no, no, nothing else. That's it. Oh, well, that's, that's great. No, I I love it. I love it. I love the fact that you've got your life together towards. And what what great timing as well, just before Christmas. I oh, know it's so nice. Oh. We we can watch all Christmas films and we go. Skating at Somerset House with the big Christmas tree and oh. the ice rink and the hot chocolate. It's going to be, it's going to be beautiful. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you so Perfect. much, uh, Ariane Shireen, for coming on. Uh, it's been really thank heartwarming you. and nice just to hear this it lovely has. little cosy it little has. story. It's, it's slightly out of the normal way we do it on this podcast, but you know what? I'm not precious about it, and I love the fact that it's just oh. just been a nice little tale, and I love it. Uh, yes. Hayley, oh. anything to add? Yeah. Oh, just wow yeah like you say it's it's completely different to normal but i i like that i like the fact that we've mixed it up a little bit and it's been so positive and thank you um but yeah thank you so much again ariane uh, and thank you Haley, for being here and thank you listeners for staying with the podcast and that was that was the week that was was it <sighs> goodbye Are you sick of paying mad money for train fares when all you want is a lovely Valentine's Day shag with your beloved? Us too, darlings. That's why we created Booty Bus. Yes, Booty Bus will get you from your A to your lover's B in only three times longer what the big, stupid, expensive train would take. 50 quid for a train fare? No worries. Pay only 42.25 for your Booty Bus journey leaving you vital change to pick up some Johnny's and a bottle of Hock to enjoy with your lover.
better still, if you can prove to us that you're on a genuine promise, we'll give you 10% off your journey, you lucky scallywag you. Booty bus. Fucking expensive train travel off, so you can get your end off. <laughs>